Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Blue Winback Show brought to you by Cavendish University, Zambia. I am Kalumba Chikonde. On this second episode of the show, we'll be having conversation around emotional intelligence. And to give us a better insight and understanding into this, we host a seasoned finance profession with experience spanning over 17 years. She is also an industry expert, having worked in both financial sector as well as the accounting practice. She currently serves as Chief Financial Officer at Absa Bank Zambia PLC and also serves on the board of the bank. She has previously served on Standard Chartered Bank Zambia PLC and Zesco PLC Audit Committees. It is my pleasure to welcome our guest on Blue Windback right now, courtesy of Cavendish, Venus Hampinda. Venus, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Kalumba. The pleasure is all mine to be here on the Blue Windback show and really looking forward to this chat. Great. So obviously we'll be having conversation around emotional intelligence a little bit later on the show. Um, before we get into that, we just want to get to know a little bit about yourself. Give us your brief profile. Okay. So Kalumba, as you've indicated, I am an accountant with over 18 years uh, experience in the finance profession. However, I must state that behind that accountant is a mother, a daughter, a colleague, and a friend who strives to bring out the best in all those around them. So very passionate about everything I do, be it work or being a support system to all those around me. Let's talk about your career choice. Um, why did you decide to choose accounting as your <laughs> profession? Yeah. Uh, I've been asked that a number of, uh, a number of times and, um, you know, interestingly, people always look at accountants as uh, the boring bean counters. Mm. They're the ones that are just going to be looking at the funds all the time and trying to put pressure on all of us, mm. the ones who are always clad in black suits. So I'm really trying to demystify that myth by making sure that I'm in some Chitenga print today. And um, for me to decide to become an accountant, it was literally around what value can I add to all those around me. Okay. And as I said, I am always passionate about bringing out the best in everyone that's around me. So it goes back to things such as, uh, as an accountant, you can work in any industry, okay. be it manufacturing, uh, the telecos, the, the, the education sector like Cavendish. Yes. It really spans across. You, you have so many opportunities in terms of which industry you can work in and learn so much. And uh, even for myself, that's evident. Having started off my career in uh, an audit firm in mm. practice, where I did close to 10 years, okay. then moved on to banking and a building society. From a building society, I'm back again in a bank. Mm. And the time that I was in practice, I literally had clients spanning the mining sector, the, the financial services sector, the education sector. So it's that array of variety that you have as an accountant. And secondly, you're also a lifelong learner. Mm. So because of the regulations that are required for you to be able to practice an accountant and the evolving accounting standards, it therefore entails that you need to continuously learn. And the technicalities that come up with uh, being an accountant, because people perceive what we do to be jargon and to be so technical, you then also need to be the one who's offering the support and being the teacher to everyone around you, making everyone understand and appreciate what you're working on. The final bit I would like to highlight of why I decided to be an accountant yeah. was purely around, uh, it's a respected profession okay. and you're expected to work with a high level of integrity and ethical value, which then maybe will perhaps link into the emotional intelligence outside. So when you look at all those points I've highlighted, you are indeed a trusted advisor mm. and a co-pilot to the entire business. So that was the drive of why I decided to be an accountant stock banker. Absolutely amazing. You definitely have a great track record working in different financial fields. Um, could you remember exactly at what point in your life you discovered uh, what you were really good at? I would say I really enjoyed what I was doing, okay. especially in audit, where I started off. But it was in September 2008 when I think I realized what I was really passionate about. Okay. And this was due to a very sombering experience that I witnessed with having one, one of the big banks, one of the key players in the UK market going into liquidation. 
where you see those smartly suited people, mm. hundreds of them walking out of that office with a little box, mm. having lost jobs. For me, that was then the point that I said, I would like to be on the other side in a bank to be able to be that trusted advisor okay. to see how then I can then grow businesses. And I then had a resolve to say that I would continue with my accounting profession, yes. which is, uh, of course, includes some risk management experience that I've had and audit experience that I've had, and therefore makes me an all-rounded person. So I've been able to work in the three lines of defense, being a salesperson as a relationship manager. Mm. I move away from being sales. I've also done risk management, which is very cardinal to be able to run the business. Absolutely. And then I've also had experience in both internal and external audit. So even when I sit as a CFO right now, Chief yeah. Financial Officer, yes. I have an understanding of what the demands are of all the various players in the organization. So it was at that point that I decided what I was going to do. So could I safely say, or could we safely say that you've always been a finance-oriented kind of a person? No, no. Then what I... happened? <laughs> <laughs> so my initial dream yes. was to be a gynecologist. Okay, how did, up, how did it change? Growing up, I was determined to be a doctor, okay. and I had even decided my line of specialization, which was gynecology. Wow. Because I believe in birthing things, in bringing out possibility, bring possibilities to life. Just like APSA, we bring possibilities to life. So for me, I think that was very, very key to me. However, first of all, the first point that I started deciding to say, perhaps I could have a future in finance, mm was, uh, believe it or not, in my junior secondary days. Okay. So getting into grade nine, in secondary school, yes. our teacher changed for office practice and yes. bookkeeping. Wow. The new teacher that came along from another school then came and said, are you sure you're writing grade nine exams? Because when I look at what you're still doing, you're way behind in terms of the syllabus. And I need each of you to pull your socks. That really demotivated all of us, and from where we're sitting, we're just saying we're failing this course. But because of the positive attributes that the teacher brought out, and the words of encouragement, the positivity she brought out, which was essentially an element of emotional intelligence mm, from her end, mm. was able to cut out put us. And trust me, all those of us who were taking office practice and bookkeeping did clear the exam. And when we went to senior secondary, we actually resolved to say we're all going to do accounting as well and commerce. So when my results came out, I had very good results in those subjects as well. And then having a father who's also in the same field, mm -hmm. when I told him I wanted to do medicine, he looked at me and said, well, go ahead, do medicine, but let's just be clear about one thing. Mm -hmm. Get your own government bursary. Wow. And I said, I am determined to do it. So I started doing my A-levels, but I found doing, myself doing A-levels in the business courses instead of uh, medicine. medicine. And yeah. I think since then, the rest has been history. And I fundamentally enjoy what I am doing. And the reason why I enjoy it so thoroughly is because I believe I am still bringing possibilities to life, even in my role as an accountant. And how do I do that? Mm. It's by helping that hospital that's looking for funding. That's university that's looking for funding to be able to create opportunities for more people. You then move on to that farmer who is also trying maybe to get a center pivot, the commercial farmer. From the commercial farmer, I move on to the SME gentleman who then is trying to work on a business plan but does not appreciate how you actually do a business plan because they've never done it. Mm. So I can then offer that technical support for them to come up with a proper business plan. And all the way to the marketeer in Soweto market, who is there in her role trying to educate her children with what she sells in the market through products such as Congola that we do have as a bank through partnerships with uh, the telcos. So I do feel fulfilled doing what I'm doing. Amazing. You definitely have a very interesting story. Um, let's talk about the corporate world and women in leadership. Do you think the corporate world has really created an enabling environment for women to climb the corporate ladder like yourself? <laughs> has it been easy? No, it hasn't been easy. Yeah, so I believe there is a lot that can be done okay. to make the environment more enabling. And unfortunately, when they're looking at whom to pick and they have both a man and a woman, the natural instinct is to go for the man. And yet, and as a result, you find women having to work twice as hard 
to get that opportunity. So I believe we can create a more enabling environment that just focuses on the, prof the professional attributes that someone has, attributes that someone has, the leadership element that they have, and not really focusing on the gender, but what is it that this person is going to offer at the table. But we're making the right strides, though I feel we're not yet there. Great. This is the Blue Windback, brought to you by Cavendish University. Our guest is Venus Hampinder. She's APSA Bank Zambia PLC Chief Financial Officer. And after the break, we'll delve into our topic, which is emotional intelligence. Stay with us. Hello, my name is Reginald Rainey, Executive Director of Cavendish University, and you're watching the Blue Wingback. Hi, my name is Tandu Msoni, Enrollments Manager at Cavendish University, and you're watching the Blue Wingback. Hello everyone, my name is Venus Hampinda. I am the Africa Regional Office Head of Strategic Tax for APSA PLC, as well as Chief Financial Officer for APSA Bank Zambia PLC, and you are watching the Blue Wingback. This is the Blue Windback, second edition brought to you by the Cavendish University Zambia. And we are having conversation around emotional intelligence. Our guest is Venus Hampinder, APSA Bank Zambia PLC Chief Financial Officer. Once again, Venus, welcome back. Thank you. We're now at the call of our conversation and obviously we're discussing emotional intelligence. What is emotional intelligence? You know, emotional intelligence is something that we usually take lightly but is very cardinal to the development of any individual. And simply put, emotional intelligence is the ability to identify what you're feeling, what the others around you are feeling, and how to manage your emotions according to the situation that you find in. So that's simply put how I would explain what emotional intelligence is. So why then is emotional intelligence important and what are some of the its Whole max. Emotional intelligence is very important because, you know, it does help us assess on how we deal with our feelings. So it's not just for our own personal benefit, but even for everyone around us. So at whatever stage you are in life, be you a student, mm. an employee, and especially in the work life, it becomes very, very important because you will find people with different personas, personalities, mm. and you then need to kind of find how best do I adapt with these individuals. And the hallmarks that we have for emotional intelligence will be self-awareness, okay. self-motivation as the second one, the ability to self-regulate, and empathy. So if you may allow me, I could just give an example of, let's say, in a university setup, mm. setup, it could be students who have been put together to work on a project. The individuals who have different personalities that are sitting on absolutely, that project, you absolutely. have maybe four individuals. Yes. Some will be loud, mm. some will be reserved, some will want to run the show, you yes, know? Yes. And it's not just an university setup. Even in the boardroom. Absolutely. Workplace. It's, workplace, it's it actually very common. Gets, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and workplace, it actually gets nasty, yes, you know? Yes. So it's how do you deal with all this? Mm. But it needs to start with yourself. Do I fully understand who I am and what I am, what I strive for and what my beliefs are? And how does everyone around me see me? Mm. That's the self-awareness element. Self-motivation is where there are days you just don't want to do anything. Yeah. But you just can't say, I'm not going to do the assignment or I'm not going to report for work today. You gotta make it happen you somehow. You've got targets. Yes, you've got, you've got, got targets. To yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that then now brings in the element of uh, self motivation. How do you pick yourself up yes. after such a bad moment? And sometimes it couldn't be not self inflicted, but it's because of the people that are around you. Maybe your line manager has just come and blasted at you, maybe not without getting a full understanding of what's happening. Yes. You need to pick yourself up. And how are you going to react when that happens? So those are some elements of, uh, some hallmarks of um, emotional intelligence. In terms of empathy, yes. it's putting yourself in other people's shoes. So when I give the example of having that environment where you're working on a project, mm. have you taken time to understand? So let's say you have someone who comes in late whenever you have a meeting, mm. a project meeting or whatever yes. it is. Yes. Have you taken time to understand why this person is coming late? Mm. Do they maybe have challenges where they're coming from? So that ability to be able to understand the, 
others around you is very, very important. So those are some hallmarks that I would highlight. So then how can one start improving their emotional intelligence? I would say it starts with paying attention to the emotional well-being, the emotional state of others that are around us. And uh, you then find yourself more equipped to lift others up. Okay. So in the bank, I am responsible for the finance team. Yes. And it's a team of maybe circa 25 people. But by virtue of my role, I am not just a CFO. Mm. I am also an executive board on the director of the bank. Absolutely. I then do have a responsibility for each and every employee in the bank. And trying to understand the various challenges that they're all experiencing is very, very important for us to be able to come and come up with a strategic fit mm. to be able to deliver on the results. Because if you have a disengaged workforce, mm. then you will not be able to there'll achieve no anything. Yes. There will be no results. Mm. So it's that ability of saying, perhaps, how does one person react? And it's basic things, even for children. And I have, I have had experiences where you've had a colleague maybe who just blows up from nowhere. Yes. Should I then also start screaming back? Mm. No. Perhaps I should be the one that takes a step lower, humbles myself. So sometimes humility is also very important. You take the step back, wait for that person to calm down, and then maybe a one-on-one -on -one with the individual to say, okay, how could we have resolved that better without everyone in the room? You know, this brings me to another question. Um, how critical do you think emotional intelligence is for candidates now when they're being recruited by institutions? Very, very critical. Very, very you know, critical. why I asked you this question is I'm looking at the students. They're about to get into the, the workspace, the corporate yes. setup, mm -hmm. because I asked you about how people can improve their emotional intelligence. Yes. These are going to be managers. These are going to be supervisors. These are going to be directors one day. So how critical is it now at that point, maybe when they're recruiting you? Mm -hmm. um, uh, employers also looking at emotional intelligence in a critical way before they hire somebody. Yes. Yes, it is very, very, it's a critical element. Okay. And I always say, you know, getting through the exams is the easier bit. Mm. Because you are making the decisions on your own. I know what time I'll study. I know what time mm. I'll wake up. I know what time I'll go and have a drink. Mm. I'll go and party. You have control of all that on your own. But then when it comes to dealing with the others around you, yes. it's very, very important. So I'll give you an example of my first job. My first job was with PwC, mm. an audit firm. Yes. And when we were being recruited, the first thing was we were put through aptitude tests. Yes. They came to the, they came to the university, yes. had aptitude tests, and as I've said, that was individual, so okay. <laughs> Ace the aptitude test. Yeah. Next, you're put through a series of interviews. Kalumba, there was one part of the interviews that was literally, they just got interviewees, students that they were considering. Yes. Like maybe six of you gave you a case study and yes. told you, can you discuss this, come up with a solution? The six of you. Wow. You don't know anyone else in the room. And the interviewers are actually there monitoring you. What do you think they were gauging there? It's it was purely emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. Yes. Yes. So how are you working and relating with everyone else? So it's literally the, that's why I say the self-awareness. Do you understand yourself? And mm. do you know how you react? Do you know at what level you're actually going to blow up? And how do you control that? So for me, that was, that's when I realized, I said, okay, so the exams are really the easier bit. Because it was a tough conversation. And there was a gentleman who was in the room. <laughs> he's, still, he's still a friend of mine up to now. Who literally wanted to take the show. He didn't want to give anyone else an opportunity to even speak. So it's... How do I interject without offending him? Mm. Because he feels he should be driving the seat. Those are some of the elements that students need to be aware of. How do you think universities like Cavendish can help their students in this area of emotional intelligence before they get into the industry? One way is literally giving them exposure to the work environment. So are you then giving the students an opportunity to say, would like you to go on a three months attachment program? Mm just for them to get a feel mm. of what actually happens out there. The second work, second work Cavendish that could actually adopt is the one I've highlighted around 
having group discussions and assessing them from that angle. And mm. even the situational analysis does help. Just put them in a tough spot yeah. and then see how they are going to react to it and then give them feedback. But it doesn't develop overnight. You need to be deliberate about it. And as I said, just like as I said, as an accountant, you are learning all the time. Even from emotional intelligence and from a soft skills perspective, you need to be deliberate about it around growing yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. So I cannot say I'm perfect at it, mm. despite, despite where I've gotten to in my career, but I do make a deliberate effort to say, how do I motivate myself? How self-aware am I? And especially empathy and also thinking about the others around me. Well, I think we have had quite a discussion around emotional intelligence. Let's just um, divert a little bit. I want us to talk about APSA, obviously, where you're coming from as yes. Chief Financial Officer. Um, APSA Zambia PLC has an education portal ready to work mm -hmm. um, that covers key aspects of one's development. Just briefly shed more light um, about this one. Okay, so Ready to Work is uh, in an initiative that was created by APSA mm. and it runs through all the Pan-African markets that we have and uh, it helps prepare young people within the age of 16 to 35 mm. to transition for a critical transition from education to employment. Okay. So even in terms of uh, emotional intelligence, yes. we do have a module that actually focuses on soft skills. And it will use a situation analysis to try and help the students groom themselves, grow themselves. So that's literally what uh, Ready to Work is all about. Who is the target audience for this Ready to Work program? It will be any youth between the age of 16 to 35, irrespective of what career or what stage they're in. And we do have three tiers. So our tier one is the university graduates. Uh, who are ready for employment. Tier two will be the college students or maybe those who are actually still studying. And uh, tier three will be the school leavers. But it is not tied to the demographic location or whether you are in employment or not or your earning capability. It's literally open to anyone and it's something that they can even get on the internet. You can use your smartphone to just go through the modules and take your own time to literally understand. And in terms of modules, there's one that focuses on work, people, entrepreneurial skills, as well as people skills. Because we do appreciate yeah. that not everyone who's going to graduate from uh, Cavendish or any other university is actually going to go into formal employment. Mm -hmm. Others are looking at becoming entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Yes. So it does have both elements. I want to talk about um, you encouraging somebody. Obviously, there are some people that are watching this, mm -hmm. um, students from Cavendish and even others, um, and they've heard your story, your growth as well. What would you say to somebody wishing to take up a job in a financial institution, or they're probably studying banking and finance, they're probably in the school of business, especially the girl child. I want to talk to the, you to them about a career in, in banking. You know, what does it take? What are some of the threats for somebody to be successful, say, in a financial institution? Because I know that financial institutions are really busy environments. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, it starts with uh, having a high level of integrity okay. as an individual and then secondly for me I just say it's the willpower the willingness to learn so I do have colleagues and friends who are top executive bankers right now yes in big banks that started off with an engineering career their first degree is engineering so I always tell people your first degree does not define who you're going to be. So like I've highlighted in my case, yes. not only did I do accounting, Absolutely. I have done a sales role, mm. but someone would have just expected me to just be stuck in banking. So it's literally around your willingness to learn and an appetite for continuous growth is what I would encourage every girl child. So I'm one of those who's who just doesn't focus on a girl child. And mm. maybe it's because I'm a mother of a son. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I don't want the boy child to be left behind. Absolutely. So for both girl child and boy yes, child, yes. yes. Don't, don't feel discouraged and say, I cannot do this. So irrespective of where you're coming from, yes. just have the zeal and willpower to say, I can achieve and I will be willing to grow myself. But at the end of it all, you also need to focus on self-care. If you do start up, 
it is okay to fail. We all fail at some point. The only important thing is do not then sit at that point and cry over the spilled milk. Be able to lift yourself up and start again. I personally have failed. Mm. I have failed an exam before, mm. but I had the resolution to say, I am going to finish this program within the stipulated time. And it meant me doing an extra course in the next semester. And that was a lot of hard work. I had to cut off all the social, no fun, nothing mm. for me to be able to catch up on that particular one course. And I still graduated in time. There are times when we do fail. So I can share an experience in my working career yes. where I literally felt maybe I was failing, but mm. I was able to get myself up. And the other thing is you need to be ready to start small. Okay. So go small to go big. And the reason I say this is a lot of graduates these days believe they should enter the bank and be a branch manager just because I'm a graduate. Mm. No, it doesn't work like that. I personally started off my career with having been an audit associate. Yes. I didn't have a car. I used to walk to a bus stop with a heavy laptop. I, but, and I had to put in the long hours. Trust me, it was a lot of hard work, but I had to do it to prove myself. So the reason I'm saying this is, and another time was, I literally had to take a step down in my role, where I moved, off, moved down from being director of finance in one organization. Mm -hmm as a financial controller mm -hmm. in another organization. But an opportunity presented itself within a year where I made CFO again in mm -hmm. that very big organization. So it's very important for you to be able to literally be willing to start small and be patient with yourself. At the end of the day, the hard work pays off. Why do you think people have this fear of failure? We focus too much on what other people are going to say. And now it goes back to the element of self-awareness linked to emotional intelligence. So people are definitely going to talk, but at the end of the day, it's what is your willpower and what is your final destination? So cancel out all the noise around you. I think that's the key reason why people bring in the element of fear. Venice, it's been amazing hosting you on this show, uh, The Blue Wing, back courtesy of Cavendish University. We are very grateful that you could spend time with us out of your busy schedule. Thank you very much. No, the pleasure is on mine, Kalumba, and I've thoroughly enjoyed this chat. Great. This has been the Blue Windback Show brought to you courtesy of Cavendish University Zambia. We were discussing emotional intelligence and of course our guest was Venus Hampinda. She is APSA Bank Zambia PLC Chief Financial Officer. I hope you got inspired by this amazing conversation. Till the very next time, this has been Kalumba Chikonde. Bye-bye. <laughs>